Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at another low-cost Chromebook. This is the Chromebook 311. This is an 11-inch Chromebook from Acer. Basic transportation here, but it actually performs pretty well, and I was impressed with the value proposition on this one. We're going to take a closer look at this and what it's all about in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now, the price point on this is usually under $200. At Target, at the time I'm shooting this video, it is currently selling for $99. And if you were looking for a cheap laptop to carry around with you, it's a great deal. You shouldn't pass it up, and hopefully it'll still be available by the time you see this video. Now, inside of this Chromebook, we have an Intel Celeron N4000 processor. This is an older chip, but in a Chromebook of this size, doing the things that Chromebooks do, it's actually good enough, I think, for most basic tasks. It has only four gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage. You cannot upgrade any part of this device, so it's mostly going to be what it is when you buy it. There's not much you can do to it down the road. It has an 11.6 inch display. It's running at 1366 by 768. It's basically a 720p display. It's about 300 nits or so. It's not terribly bright, but it's a little brighter than some of the cheaper laptops I've looked at recently. It is an IPS display. It's got somewhat decent viewing angles. It's a matte finish, at least on this one. It's not a touchscreen though, so you will need to use the trackpad down here to navigate with it but a pretty nice display given the price point. Now the build quality on this is all plastic. You're not gonna get any metal at this price point. You got a good amount of range to the screen here. It's not all that heavy. It comes in at about 2.5 pounds or 1.13 kilograms. So maybe a little bit heavier than an iPad with a keyboard, but you'd get pretty much a full functioning laptop here. The keyboard is really nice on it. It's got nicely spaced keys that are very easy to type with, good tactile feedback. You get decent key travel on it too. The keyboard though is not backlit, so you will need to feel your way around the keyboard in the dark, but I was very pleased with the typing experience on here, especially if you're doing a lot of writing. I think this might be a really good laptop for writers looking for something simple to draft something on. The trackpad isn't that bad either. It tracks quite well. It is a mechanical click pad, but it's not too springy. And I found that it really works pretty well here all together. So I was very pleased with that. On the side here, you've got a bunch of ports. Of note, it has two USB Type-C ports. It's got one here on the left-hand side and one on the right-hand side. What's interesting is that these are full service USB-C ports. They do power, video, and data. And a little earlier, I connected it up to two 4K displays, and it was able to drive both of those displays independently at 4K at 60 frames per second, and it was able to maintain its own internal display. The performance isn't spectacular given the RAM and processor on this one, but nonetheless, you can hook up two distinct external displays to it. Just note though that these USB-C ports are also how the laptop gets power. So you will need to find some compatible docking station that can provide power to the laptop while also outputting display at the same time. But if you're able to track one of those down, uh, you can run on power two distinct displays and use them independently. This is a USB 3 port here, a full size one. You also have a micro SD card slot here for augmenting the onboard storage. So you could pop in a larger card to store media and other things so you can offload some of that minimal storage on the 32 gigabyte drive. You have a headphone microphone jack here. And then on the other side, we've got the other USB type C port. This is another USB three port, USB A connector there. And then you've got a Kensington lock. This is a fanless laptop. The uh, grills here at the bottom are for the very tinny speakers. And what this laptop will do is slow itself down the hotter it gets. But generally when you're working with a Chromebook, you're not typically pushing the hardware all that hard. And I found it doesn't get all that hot while it's in operation. Now battery life on this is about eight to 10 hours depending on what you're doing with it and how bright the display is. But I think for most folks, it should be able to get you through the entire workday. It does have a webcam here at the top. It is only 720p, but the quality isn't all that bad. A little fuzzy maybe, 
but I think if you're doing Zoom calls or Google Meets, this will be more than adequate for that. All right, let's take a look now and see how it performs. We'll begin with the basics here, some web browsing. So we'll pull up the Google Chrome browser and head over to the nasa.gov homepage. And as you can see, everything renders up here pretty quickly. Now this does have Wi-Fi built in, of course, and this is running with an AC Wi-Fi adapter, not a Wi-Fi 6, but Acer says this supports the wider 160 megahertz standard that AC Wi-Fi supports, so it's conceivable you could get close to gigabit wireless speeds if you have a Wi-Fi access point that supports that. Uh, but I think for most folks, the performance here will be more than fine on your Wi-Fi, so all good on the web browsing front. Now, a little bit earlier, we connected this up to a 4K 60 hertz display to see how it could do YouTube at that resolution and frame rate. And to my surprise, after dropping a bunch of frames when it first got started, it was able to largely keep up with a 4K 60 video running full screen on an external display. It does drop a frame every once in a while here and there, but for a laptop as inexpensive as this, I was very pleased with its video playback performance. It should also do well with Netflix and all the other services out there you might be subscribed to. One thing to note though, and I always like to bring this up on Chromebooks, is that these Chromebooks run Android apps, and if you run the Android version of Netflix, for example, it will limit the resolution of the display output due to copyright stuff. So if you want the best performance and the best experience, even at 720p, my suggestion would be to access your online services through the web browser and not through the Android apps. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 51.3, and that puts this 11-inch Chromebook right in line with its competitors in the marketplace. Now, like most Chromebooks, this one will run Android apps in addition to some of the Chrome OS features. You'll find the Google Play Store on your taskbar here at the bottom. If you purchase games on your tablet or phone, Many of them will be available on the laptop here, but note there are some compatibility issues that you might run into because some games expect a touch display, some games are not written for the Intel processor that this one has, but if things are compatible, casual games that you'll find on the store will run just fine, including Crossy Road here, which also supports Bluetooth controllers. I hooked up my Xbox controller to it a little while ago, so you can get a feel for the performance there. So all in for casual gaming on Android, it should do just fine. That will also include things like game emulation. It should do the eight and 16-bit consoles fairly well. And on the topic of emulators, there's a lot of great emulation experiences you can have just inside of a web browser. This one is called System7.app, and it loads up a classic Macintosh that you can play around with. And it's got a lot of games and software already loaded on, so you can see what that experience was like. Uh, the Internet Archive has a bunch of things like this as well for games and old computing systems. And there's just a lot now you can do without having to install anything. And a lot of these just run awesome on this very low-end hardware. Now, Chromebooks also now have native support for Linux applications. There's a setting inside of the system settings to enable that. And when you do enable it, you get your command prompt here that you can use to install software. So for example, I've got my nano text editor here that a viewer, Chris Allegretta, was responsible for creating, and it works great on here, of course. But it also runs graphical Linux applications. So LibreOffice, for example, is a great one to install because this is an open source, free Microsoft Office alternative. And this runs natively on the computer itself. So I've got my word processor up here. If I write a whole bunch of text on the page here and save it, it's going to be stored on the computer. It requires no cloud to operate. And you get a very nice Microsoft Office experience with a spreadsheet, a word processor, and a few other applications as well. And they all run great on here, about at the level of performance I would expect based on the processor we have on board here. So overall, I am very pleased with the value proposition of this device. Even at its regular price, I think it's a pretty good deal. I love the USB-C ports on it. I think the performance is adequate for the types of things that a computer like this would do. And if you are somebody who's concerned about an expensive laptop getting lost or stolen when you're out and about, this one, I think, will take a lot of that concern away and not 
require you to compromise all that much in what you can do on the road. So all in a tremendous value here from Acer. And that's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Jim Tannis and Tom Albrecht, Hot Sauce and Video Games and Eric's Variety Channel, Brian Parker and Frank Goldman, Amda Brown and Matt Zagaya, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. Don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.